So we have a number of uh, modeling tools for uh, NURBS and uh, poly meshes that uh, require things like curve inputs and surface inputs. So I'm just going to go through some of these in this menu here, uh, such as extrusions and uh, revolutions and that sort of thing. And uh, so we'll just start off with a couple of these and we'll just go through the menu. So first of all, a birail is um, quite simply a similar to an extrusion, except that you have two rails uh, guiding the actual extrusion. So if I uh, just go here and uh, select by rail, then I just need to uh, select my curves and my uh, two guides, and it will now then extrude along that, using that profile and guiding it along the surface. So you notice that here the uh, normals are uh, pointing in the wrong way, it would seem. So I just simply insert, invert the normals, and that looks a lot better. There we go. So that's quite straightforward. Um, again, with all of these operators, because uh, of the relational modeling, I can always go in and change the curves at any time, and uh, the uh, model will then, the, the geometric mesh will then follow. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, hide those guys again. Let's get rid of those. And uh, while well, that uh, object was fantastic, it's not that fantastic. Okay, so then uh, next we're just going to uh, have a look at the. Um, the curve net is basically very similar to a loft, it's except you have uh, the curves in both directions, so I'm not really going to go into that. Um, an extrusion along axis is uh, quite simple. It's uh, simply just grab a uh, circle, for example, and uh, we'll just extrude along axis, and you see that it just extrudes along directly. And then you can extrude along a curve to uh, uh, modify the direction. Now, uh, what's a little bit more complicated is when you extrude with two profiles. So let's just unhide that. And basically what that does is it extrudes but uses a guide rail to uh, guide that extrusion. So it's similar to a by rail in, certain, uh, in some way, except that uh, you then have it just the other way with the curve. So again, uh, basically you just select it, extrude in two profiles, pick, and then pick. And then basically what it's doing is it ex extruding it along here. Okay, so you'll see that. Again, we have it uh, inverted, and you can uh, straighten it to the various uh, curves. Uh, to the profiles, and we should invert that here. There we go. Okay, so that's uh, again quite quite a useful uh, uh, modifier to have, or uh, geometric creation tool to have. So we can uh, hide this again. Um, next one in the uh, list is the four sided. Now, basically, what four sided does is it takes uh, four curves, and uh, again, with all of these, you want to sort of try when, when it's relying on uh, curves to be. Uh, touching each other to get the corners as close together as possible, if possible even use the snapping tool so they really are touching. Uh, that will just make your results that much more accurate. So with the uh, four-sided, all you have to do is uh, just simply launch your four-sided and then pick the, tw the curves in any order and it will then use those to generate a, uh, a mesh. Again, this is quite useful for uh, closing up areas or that sort of thing because you can simply just extract the curves uh, from the bounding area if you have like a large uh, area that you want to uh, cap. You can just uh, extract the curves from that area and then use this to uh, fill it up. Okay, so uh, that's pretty clear. We'll just hide those again. Now next we, um, we've we seen the loft. I, uh, we had quite a bit on the loft, so I'm just going to uh, grab here the uh, revolution and revolution on curve. Now basically revolution and revolution around curve are, are pretty much the same thing, except one is using a curve to define where the revolution goes and the other one just simply an axis. So basically what we'll do is we'll just uh, do a revolution around axis and you can see that uh, again it just does that. We'll uh, again invert it. There we go. And you can see that uh, basically what it does is it just rotates it around sort of like a lathing revolution around curve just simply uses this curve to define where it's going to be uh, lathing around. So we'll just uh, grab that revolution around curve, pick the curve, and then we can move this curve around to define how it's going to, uh, where the axis of the of the revolution really is going to happen. Again, a useful tool to uh, have, but uh, fairly straightforward to use. Okay, so let's just delete these guys and hide these here. Okay, so uh, next let's look at some of the other guys, these blends and fits and all that sort of nonsense. So uh, in order to do that, we'll just uh, pop up some of these guys here. These are basically two lofted uh, things that I have here, and we can use them to demonstrate some of this. Okay, so now basically what a blending will do, uh, we'll just go in there and select surface blend, 
and maybe from this guy to this guy. So again, you're picking the boundary edges that it'll blend from to. And whoops, we have an inverse thing again there. Okay, so now basically what it does is it creates a middle piece that blends in between these nerve surfaces. So then you can merge them together and uh, it'll all fit quite nicely. Okay, the uh, fit just simply uh, matches the uh, actual UVs and uh, the, 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 the UV coordinate things up uh, of the nerve surface up to each other. So uh, basically we can just do that here and say exactly how many of these uh, I really need. So it's a bit like a cleanup uh, for, for your nerve surfaces. Um, again, you can you know ma maintain a discontinuity if you need it, if you already have one. Um, and you can, you know, say linear or cubic and it's all quite quite useful for cleaning up your nerve surfaces if you already have one um, but in this case we don't really need to do that especially if you have large bunches of, uh, of, of lines in U or V or something like that and you need to uh, just interpolate a little bit get it a little bit cleaned up then it uh, that's very useful okay so uh, next we have um, our uh, fillet intersection and to do that whoops let's just uh, get rid of these guys again and we'll grab a uh, NURB sphere. There we go, hello sphere. And we'll grab a, maybe a NURB uh, b b cylinder. That should work pretty well. Okay, so we now have a cylinder and a sphere. And so we have this cylinder sticking into this sphere like that. And now what we'd wish to do is have like a nice fine blending between the two. So rather than a sharp angle, um, so I'll just frame in here. Rather than the sharp angle, we just like have a nice surface that goes across. So basically all we have to do is select these two, do a fillet intersection, and it'll create a nice rounded uh, sort of blend between the two. And you can see that that looks quite nice then. And we can uh, you know, increase the radius if we want to, uh, just make it that much nicer, and then merge them all together if we needed to. So that's the fillet intersection. Uh, again, this is all animatable, so um, remember it updates as you move. So if I move this around, you can see that the uh, fillet intersection actually also updates uh, to match the, uh, the geometry. So again, you can animate across here and it'll, it'll look fine.